What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna do my best at providing a guide to building a budget PC under $600. So please stick around for the rest of the video. As always, I will have links to the parts down in the description below. And if you did like the video, go ahead and leave a like. And I would also appreciate if you did subscribe as it helps me and will notify you when I post future videos. All right, so let's get started. So with any new build, I recommend using PCPartPicker.com. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. It's just a very useful tool if you're trying to get a parts list for your build. And if this is your first time building a PC, then this will be the most helpful tool for you. So PC Part Picker is essentially a parts database that allows you to put together a PC based on compatibility and pricing. Meaning as you select parts for your build, it will filter out only the parts that are compatible with the parts that you have already selected. All right, so with any new build, you need to ask yourself, what are you trying to get out of your computer? As this will determine what type of processor you should buy so you can start building around your CPU. So as someone building the first PC, the typical response would be to primarily game on and to do some general web browsing. So with that said, I recommend going with a processor with at least six cores as this is the sweet spot for gaming these days and is at least within the last couple generations. Now this next part isn't a requirement, but as a first time builder and to kind of play it safe, you want to make sure that your motherboard is of the same generation as your CPU. The reason being is that you limit the amount of potential compatibility issues that you could have, but take that with a grain of salt and make sure that you do your research. So in this case, because we're on a budget, your options are going to be limited to 12th gen Intel or Ryzen 5000. Simply because of price to performance, these CPUs are widely available, they're affordable, and they still perform very well. I myself am still using a 12700K and I do not intend to upgrade anytime soon because it still does everything I need it to do. Now keep in mind, if you do decide to use one of these CPUs, that your upgrade path is going to be somewhat limited. For Intel, if using the same motherboard and RAM, that being DDR4, you will only be able to upgrade up to 14th gen Intel. And for Ryzen, you can't upgrade past the 5000 series since it's the last series on the AM4 platform. But for most people, that is a non-issue since they intend to keep their PC for several years. So here I have a mock-up list of parts on the very budget end. These are all parts that you can purchase all brand new today. And on the right, you can see where to buy at the lowest price available. And at the bottom, you have the total price. Now, notice at the top, you have your total wattage and it's also throwing a red warning stating an issue regarding compatibility. Now you can click on the details and it explains what the issue is. And this is the great thing about PC Part Picker. Now the warning is saying that the Ryzen 5500 is not compatible with an older BIOS version and will need to be upgraded in order for it to work. Now this is just an example and no need to worry since these parts have been out for quite some time Chances are that the motherboard will likely come with the updated firmware that supports the CPU So here I have another list closer to what we'll be using you will notice in the video I'm not using all the parts from this list and that is because I already have these parts from previous builds that I've done on this channel This is just another example of a budget build and what you could expect to pay and as you can see We are under that $600 budget now these parts in black were entered manually because prices fluctuate so often These were the prices at the time of acquiring these parts looking back at the top The compatibility warning is green meaning we do not have any compatibility issues in note that this is not taking into account things like clearance constraints. So at this point, we made our list, we made sure we are good on compatibility, we placed our orders, we received our parts, now we're ready to begin putting together our PC. This is the Okinos Cypress 3, your standard layout with modern wooden accents. The build quality is what you would expect at this price point, but I think they did a good job given the sub-60 price. The front I.O. is located on the side, which I do prefer. The front I.O. comes with your standard inputs and also includes a USB Type-C, which is nice to see these budget cases starting to include. The Cypress 3 comes with four case fans, one exhaust, and three intake. With every case, you'll find an included accessory box, which includes things like zip ties and additional standoffs. But most importantly, you'll want to find the motherboard screws so you can mount the motherboard to the case. Now looking at the included cables routed to the front I.O., we have a USB 3 cable, the USB Type-C cable, the HD audio cable, and the front panel cables. After removing the rear panel, at the bottom we have a hard drive mounting tray. Since we're not using a hard drive, we're going to remove this to add additional room for our cables when installing the power supply. Okay, now that the case is out of the way, we are ready to start installing our components onto the motherboard prior to mounting it to the case. First, we're going to start by installing our CPU. If you look closely, you can see a small arrow on the corner of the PCB and another arrow on the corner of the IHS. You want to match this with the same arrow shown here on the CPU socket cover, and sometimes it will be located on the motherboard PCB. First, you want to open the mounting bracket by pushing down and out on the lever. So matching up the notches on one side, first gently lower in the CPU. I give it a little shake just to make sure it's seated all the way. 
Now we lower the mounting bracket on top of the CPU and remove the protective cover and with some force, press down and secure the lever. Next up, we remove the heatsink in order to install the SSD. The SSD will have a notch on one end so when installing you line it up and seat it at an angle. Now we can reinstall the heatsink but before we want to make sure to remove the film from the thermal pad. While pressing down on the SSD, we can reinstall the heatsink. Now we are ready to install our RAM. As you can see, we have four slots, but note the DIMMs can only be installed two ways. Most boards with four slots support dual channel memory, meaning when installing, you want to match the channels for both modules by skipping a slot. So the two inner slots are A1, A2, and the two outer slots are B1 and B2. So installing, we want to go in A1 with B1, or A2 with B2. I always install on the outermost channel since this will give us the most clearance for our CPU cooler. So we now want to open the retaining clips. The modules will have a notch, so this can only go in one way. Just make sure it's in the correct orientation, then just press down firmly and you should hear and see the clips lock into place. Up next, we can install our CPU cooler. Some would consider this the most challenging part since it requires thermal paste and a bit of precision, but it's really quite straightforward. This is the Cooldex SD4, which is made by Superflower. If you are familiar with them, they are known primarily for their power supplies, and this is their first take at a CPU cooler. This is an unreleased version and looks to release sometime mid-April. So before installing, we need to install the included mounting hardware. This is the mounting bracket, which you can adjust to accommodate different socket types, and mounts to the backside of the motherboard through the four pre-drilled holes. Once in position, you can lay the motherboard back down and we can install the included spacers. On top of those, we can place the mounting brackets with the threads facing up so we can mount our cooler. Now we are ready to apply our thermal paste. There are several methods to applying thermal paste, so pick which one works best for you. Once done, we can grab our cooler and remove the fan so we can access the other screw when installing. As you can see, the heat pipes are more to one side. This is because there needs to be enough clearance for the fan so it doesn't hit or rub up against the RAM. Before mounting, make sure to remove the plastic film on the base plate. Now, slowly lowering onto the post, you can begin securing the screws. You generally want to alternate between the screws so you can apply even pressure so that the paste evenly distributes across the IHS. Now you can reinstall the fan to the fins on the heat sink using the wire clips and you're done. Since this is an addressable RGB fan, it will come with two cables. One cable to control the fan speed and the second cable to control the LEDs. Here on the top right of the motherboard, we have a three pin addressable RGB header. This is where the LED cable will go and up further we have two CPU fan headers which is where our power cable will go. So plugging in the power cable to the CPU fan 1 header and plugging the LED cable in the 3 pin ARGB header. Now that that's done, we can begin mounting our motherboard parts to the inside of the case. But before that we need to install the rear IO shield. All you do is line up and press firmly until it snaps into place. Now we can drop in our motherboard and secure it using the motherboard screws. Now we can install the power supply, but first, since I'm using a fully modular power supply, I'm going to install the cables first. On cheaper power supplies, they will already have some or all cables already attached. Okay, so first we have our 24 pin motherboard power cable. Next, the CPU power cable. And finally, the PCIe power cable, which will power our graphics card. Since we have an opening at the bottom, we want to point the fan down so the PSU can draw in cold air from the bottom. Then we just slide it in and secure the screws. At this point, all the components are installed except for the graphics card. We want to leave that until the end so we have enough room to connect all of our cables. Undoing the ties for the case fans, the three front intake fans are all daisy chained together so all we need to do is plug in the end cable. Now we can start feeding all of our cables so we can connect them on the other side.
Now that all our cables are fed through, let's start by connecting the HD audio cable. While I was here, I relocated the LED cable from the CPU cooler to another open header. Next to that, we have two open fan headers, which is where we'll be connecting our exhaust fan and the three intake fans that are all daisy chained. Next, we have the front panel cables. If you look at the pins, they are all labeled with positive plus signs. On the back of each connector, you will have a small arrow indicating the positive wire. Now just match the arrows with the positive end and you are good to go. If you end up having any of these reversed, nothing bad will happen. It will simply not work as intended and you will need to correct. Now onto our CPU power cable. The additional four pins on the right are only for additional power, which is not needed unless doing extreme overclocking. Next up, we got the USB 3 cable. There is a small notch on the connector, so make sure it's aligned correctly. Now, as you can see, the USB Type-C cable is not symmetrical, so you want to make sure it's aligned correctly. Now for the motherboard power cable, you may need to apply additional pressure when seating. If you get a little flex from the PCB, that's okay. Once all motherboard cables are installed, we can finally install our GPU. You want to make sure you are installing it in the main PCIe slot, and the tab is in the unlocked position. This case has PCI slot covers, so I'm lining up my GPU first so I know which ones to remove. This may take some back and forth pressure to pry off. On the back of the case, we have another bracket cover we need to remove. Now we can install our GPU. Notice the fins at the bottom of the support bracket. These will go in the space between the motherboard and the case if there's no dedicated slots. While slowly lining up with the slots, press firmly until it clicks. If there's any difficulty, then make sure the tab is in the unlocked position. Now we can install our final power cable, secure it to the case, and reinstall our cover. Now, the cable management will be entirely up to you if you decide to use zip ties. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to show that it's not necessary and we're just going to train some of the cables and shove them in and close the rear panel. Now we can reinstall the rest of the panels and remove the plastic wrapping from the tempered glass. Don't forget to remove the inner wrapper as well. All right, so all our work has led up to this point. This is the moment where you either breathe a sigh of relief or utter disappointment. After connecting our cables and the rest of our peripherals, we can go ahead and power on the system and marvel at our work. Hope you didn't mind the b-roll once you see the splash screen or the bios menu then that my friends is a successful post it will be at your discretion whether or not you update the bios firmware you'll want to do that before changing any settings once done or if not at all then the one thing to make sure to do is enable the xmp or expo profile so you get the advertised speeds of your ram now we can install our operating system i'm installing windows 11 once done you can start installing the motherboard drivers and updating windows windows 11 does an okay job of installing the drivers for you you just want to make sure to at least manually install the GPU driver. After that, make sure to test the system for proper functionality and you're ready to start enjoying your PC. So if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you don't mind, go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Was this helpful? Was it not? Do you hate me and think I suck? I want to hear about it. Well, that's all for me guys. Peace.